Scotland versus England, the oldest international fixture. And I don't remember a previous game being as much of a, a coin flip as this one. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me. There he is, look. Hey, TT. Thanks for having me on. Uh, big, big rivalry again this weekend. Can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. How do you see it? Do you think it's a coin flip? I, th I think it could go either yeah. way in this game. How do you see it? Yeah, I think it is a coin flip. Um, although uh, Scotland are uh, favourites by all accounts, and, and that's the chat coming out of England, which you very rarely hear shows where <laughs> they are at the moment. Um, so trying to push that pressure on to, to Scotland, I think. But uh, yeah, I think I think both teams are as bad as each other. I jest. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah. Every, every opinion I've heard so far reckons it's very, very close, but Scotland are marginal favourites. So let's get into the selections because there is some super interesting stuff uh, mm -hmm. in here. Scotland first and their forwards and Jamie Ritchie back in at blindside, having been jettisoned for the previous game completely. What is going on with this, Elko? No, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Um Gregor's just mad, isn't he? Um, don't know. Maybe, maybe they just really, they, you know, he's got some great um, sort of history with in this in this fixture, particularly. So uh, maybe they feel they need him in here. Um, maybe they, as long as they keep him away from the referee, uh, it's it's a it's a good selection. But uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was really strange. But um, fair fair play. Um, Watson was 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 back in the wider squad as well. So it's uh, very interesting. Yeah, Townsend has said they, uh, you know, they think the breakdown is going to be super important, which is one of the reasons he's come back in. They also said he reacted incredibly well to being dropped from the squad entirely the previous time. So it's a combination of things, I'm sure. But I'm not sure what's happened to Matt Fagus and whether he's injured or not. Uh, he's, you know, he's not on the bench either. So um, it's yeah, an interesting I, I one. I, I think I heard he was carrying something, um, as far as I know, but... Yeah, it is. It's. Uh, I mean, in terms of breakdown, that's that's a that's a, a very competitive back row Scotland have there. So fair play. Yeah, and just looking through the red team they got here again, very settled. You know, big strong front five, plenty of good options there. You know, very physical um, on both sides of the ball. So, you know, this is um, this is a good Scotland pack. Yeah, I think um, set play will be will be massive um, to to get that. You know. First phase possession and, and launch plays, um, and um, yeah, it, it's a very settled team. I think I think the the, the scrum is is particularly good. Um, um, they, they seem to have really, you know, they work very well as a as a unit um, and have done for the last um, you know, since the World Cup, really. Um, so uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see um, how the set plays go for sure. It will be, and I'm going to pick out Schumann out of this this gang here because I thought he was outstanding against France against. Winnie Antonio. So when we get to the England selection, it's going to be very interesting to see how he goes this week. Let's move into the backs. And we have Kyle Stain returning on the right wing um, following unavailability in the previous game. And most importantly, mm. I think for Scotland, Blair Kinghorn, who I think is a really, really great player, comes back in fit and available at fullback. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Massive. And again, if we look at the, when we get on to England, it's interesting. Um, the two fifteens will be interesting. Uh, he, he's he's quality attacking. Stain coming back in is brilliant. I mean, the young kid that that played the other week, I thought was exceptional. Maybe wasn't as tested as 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 much by a by a poor French team, but um, there's there's um, well we'll we'll see. They might have been anticipating um, a yeah, quite a lot of kicking from England but um yeah well I'm not too sure about that now but we'll see um but this is a I love this back line I just think it it just screams uh yeah, Russell's got so many tools here that he can that he can launch and um, they've got a massive pair um in their 12 but then they've got like um gas all over the place and a a, a really um sort of a high IP9 who's who's a very intelligent player in white so yeah I can't wait to to see what happens on on uh, Saturday afternoon yeah, it's I'd like what I think about this back line is I think balance. They've got they've got everything they need yeah. there to challenge defenses in every different way. So and again, huge experience of playing together. They've played together so many times as well that I think that's a real that's a real big factor. Let's move on to the bench. And 
The thing I want to pick out here is Miller Mills keeps his spot ahead of WP Nell, who was fit. Well, he was played last weekend, so I'm not sure what's happened there. I, I'd be very surprised if he was, you know, fully fit and not selected. That that would seem strange to me. Yeah, I mean, Nell's got so much experience, and against a, an English pack who are probably, arguably stronger scrummaging wise on the bench um uh, you know in terms of what impact those guys will make but um he is a strange one uh, unless we're, unless they're seeing stuff in 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 fitness levels and training that we're that we're not privy to but uh, it is a could be a risk yeah it could be and then the only other thing that i would question is that he's he's kept healy on the on the bench as well even though he's got cover at, at fly half by potentially red path but that was the same as before but Kinghorn has played a lot of fly half for Scotland as well. So I wondered whether Healy might miss out and they might bring in a, another back three type player um, for this. But no, they've gone with, you know, he must really value having specialist cover at fly half. That's what I'm getting from this. Yeah, and probably because he was a 10 himself, right? Maybe that's what he just feels he, he, need, he needs there and, and looking at. The different scenarios if certain people get injured that's that's what he wants again you don't know what's going on in training there could have been people having complete howlers and he just doesn't have the the confidence uh, or trust um in that but you would think if um you would think if if finn was to come off you'd you'd want a specialist tent to come on just to settle everything down because you're you're you know if you're losing him you're in you're in you're in a bit of trouble um well any any team would be so maybe that's what he's what he's gone for yeah yeah, makes sense. Okay, let's move on to England. And as suspected, they've swapped the props. Um, I, I'm i a fan of this selection. Um, I mentioned it in the uh, selection prediction video earlier in the week. And sometimes props just need refreshing. If you're starting game after game after game, or if you're on the bench game after game after game, you kind of lose your edge a little bit. And I think it's a good mental freshen up as much as anything to, to have this happen, especially when they're all, you know, kind of much of a muchness in terms of performance. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's, I think it's good. And you can probably, you know, you can play with that. It, I would imagine they've spoken about this before the tournament and um, the players are aware of it. And I guess it means then that these guys can completely empty the tank. Um, they're ne- they're not holding back. And, you know, okay, arguably they're professional players. You shouldn't be holding back. But the reality is, sometimes that happens. You know, so if they can keep their energy levels really, really high all the way through, knowing that they're coming off at whatever sixty, um, and they've had a week regen as well, or two weeks regen in this case, then I think it's clever um, management from from the England um, the coaching staff. Yeah, and I also like the fact that they're keeping them as pairs as well. So both in, both out. And I think that gives good balance. It gives good balance of carrying and scrummaging power and mobility around the pitch. Because no question, Cole and Marler are probably bigger on the scrummaging, lower on the mobility and vice versa the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of, yeah, a lot of a lot of teams will, would, I mean, I don't know. I'd probably want my scrummaging guys on first. Um, and so Genji for me is is, is interesting. But then... He's such a, you know, if he gets a few big barreling runs going, um, he, he can be, he can take a crowd out of the game, which they'll probably try and do on, on Saturday as well. But uh, yeah, it, it is, it, it is nice balance. Like I can see what he's doing and it's, um, it's clever man management. Yeah. Gen- Genji's mental state could be an interesting factor in this game because we don't want him to be overly aroused as we've spoken about before. Um, he needs to make sure he stays in control this is going to be a hugely volatile atmosphere. And it, we haven't seen him lose control, I don't think, for quite no. some time. To be honest. So I no, just think, and, yeah. Him and Marla have, 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 I don't know if they're getting help with that. Um, I know uh, Ireland have been really heavy on that. And and um, I think I sent you a link for, for or tagged you in some stuff with Porter talking about mental health stuff and, who's also a loose head, t- tells you something, TT. Uh, <laughs> obviously, something going on in the front row. Um, <laughs> but I think, you know, he. I haven't seen him. I think he's matured hugely. I know he's had a kid. Maybe that's sort of um, uh, settled him a bit. He's moved to Bristol in that time, back to, his, to where he's from. Maybe that's settled him down as well. But also, you know, exactly what we just said, the, the man management that he's, that he's receiving is, is probably 
quite good as well. Um, different to what they're they've probably been used to before. But but I still both him and Marlon are still, um, and we we know Joe very well. Um, that there is still potential flashpoints in both of those guys. And and you're right, you know, uh, someone like a, a Jamie Ritchie might you know give him a little poke or hold him down or something, and he 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 will he potentially could react. So he'll need to um keep the the head in the fridge um but still be playing that huge high level uh, in terms of intensity yeah absolutely i think four through eight deserve to keep their places some more than others potentially uh but there's certainly going to be some pressure coming on in future weeks from the bench i think okay let's move on to the backs and danny care comes in to replace injured alex mitchell and ollie lawrence straight in at 12 and the big surprise, George Furbank <laughs> in four. Um, oh, I've forgotten his name. Help me out. <laughs> Freddie Stewart. Uh, Freddie Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Danny Kerr, I think, <clears throat> I, I suspected or I, I, I thought um, Ben Spencer might start because th- there's been various reasons. But, you know, we've seen it before with Borthwick when Mitchell came into the World Cup squad and, and started. And Kerr's ability from the bench, I think, is is really you know, clutch. Um, but he's gone with care. He's, he'll have had the more reps over the over the weeks of the Six Nations so far. So more entrenched in the squad. And I'm I'm perfectly happy with that selection. It makes makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of DC. It's his first Six Nations start in six years. Would you believe? Crazy. Um, just just won't go away, will he? Just hanging on there. Um, I know he's he's a he's a he's a cracking player. In, in in but it's it's a funny in some in some ways it's a funny selection because uh, Borthwick confuses me completely because he's kind of he's kind of half saying we're going to go for this and then and then he's kind of not he's kind of like why would you pick forward why why not you know bring Finn Smith in um presumably Marcus is still injured um but uh, it's it's just an inter- it's just an interesting one I, I thought you might have just it's particularly if you're bringing in. The Saints fullback, and you got the Saints winger on there. Why not? Let's go for it, lads, sort of thing. Um, but uh, they probably feel they need a bit of wily settled play from from uh, forward there. But yeah, I mean, Furbank coming in is 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 is, mad, is is brilliant. Like I think it's it's. But again, it's interesting. I'm I'm wondering why are they? I I think they're. I would imagine what what both is expecting is probably what we're all expecting is that Scotland are going to come to play because. They messed up the week before last. They got they got robbed um, with the last decision. There's going to be a lot of feeling about that, uh, both in terms of the players and the crowd. I think, um, and also more importantly to me is that uh, they butchered overlaps at the end. Um, and they you know they should have played um, wider. And I just have a feeling that. Borthwick thinks that they're going to come and really play and not do a lot of kicking. That's why they've, they've dropped um, Freddie out, uh, completely uh, gone. So um, Furbank's a much more attacking uh, player. He's uh, he's amazing to watch. Great tash. Um, he's he's been on complete form for for Saints. Um, and and that back three is has got lots and lots of gas. And also you've, then you've got Lawrence in the in the centres there who can match their twelve, but also you know, get some line breaks and get him in behind. But it's it's just it's an interesting one because um if England do go to play like that, are they are they not slipping into what Wales, Scotland, what happened there? And I just uh, I don't know, it, it blows my mind. So um it's gonna be fascinating to see what, what England do. Can they get out of this what are they calling a Borthers bull? Um <laughs> uh and, and the lots of kicking and everything else and then this mad defence that's coming up. Um but he, but he's but he's pit like in in Danny Kerr and Furbank that is saying we are going to run the ball surely, but is it? I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. I think Danny Kerr's got the ability to play however tactically they want to play. You know, I think he's a good kicker. Um, he can pass. He can run. He's a full package as far as I'm concerned. Admittedly, you know, his real point of difference is is you know his, his sniping breaks and his short kicking game. But he he is a he's capable of doing it all. The Lawrence at 12, I'm delighted with. You know, I I, I thought maybe they'll go with Tuolagi because of his experience in coming back from injury into a big game. But Lawrence has been the form centre in England. So I, 
absolutely delighted to see him get a shot at that. The fullback one is super interesting because I think this is a real horses for courses type selection. I think he's sort of anticipated maybe Scotland aren't going to go for too many contestable kicks. And therefore, you know, having Stewart on the pitch is less of a factor in that respect. Scotland are certainly going to move the ball when they get the opportunity. And I think it's fair to say Stewart's been found out a few times defensively in terms of position and movement. Burbank will certainly be better at that. So I see it more on the defensive side that this selection has been made rather than the attacking side. That being said, <laughs> that, that being said, England have lost a ball player, a handling player from their midfield in Dingwall. So I think maybe it's on the attacking side, it brings more balance in the fact that Furbank's more of a passer than a hitting the line type mm-hmm. fullback, although he can do that as well. So there's a lot going on here. And um, how they how they play, how this back line functions, I'm going to be super interested to see. Oh, it's 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 mad. Like the matchups are just are brilliant, you know. Um, it's it, it kind of kind of feels to me that like, we, we I mean I can't believe I'm saying this as a forward, but you traditionally you go it's going to be decided up front, but actually this feels a bit more that's going to be decided in the backs. Um, forwards are fairly have parity, I think. I, well, we'll find out on Saturday, but but it, it, this is so interesting. Um, I guess we're we're. Scotland will be really comfortable in is is the, the fact that it's it's a fairly settled team, and um, whereas you know, obviously Lawrence and 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 Slade have played together quite a bit, but not as much. You know, it's not it's not a combination as settled as as the Scottish ones. So, um, they'll, I mean, arguably certainly in defence you don't need that, and the defence we know that's coming with Felix Jones' rush defence. It's it is kind of individuals. It's not about partnerships as much. It's just about trusting the guy inside and just doing what he does. So that bit won't be too bad. But the actual attacking play, uh, yeah. So maybe they maybe they'll bypass that combination and um, rope a dope us all. And uh, Danny will be box kicking. <laughs> who who knows? Honestly, I, I'm super intrigued by this. So awesome. let's just take a look at the bench. And there, are, as far as I'm concerned, there's zero surprises here. George Martin comes back in. He could prove massive impact off the bench. Alex Cole's unlucky, done nothing wrong, but yeah, Martin's just a better player. And uh, yeah, Fair Wibosu could again come off the bench and and make a big impact if given the chance, if if the game needs it. Yeah, he might he might get two or three minutes at the end to to chase some kicks. Um, no, I, I like this. I'm I, uh, Martin's. Quite, I love him. He's such a old school beast a uh, you know and clearly a big favorite of Borthwick who, who sort of I think discovered him up there in, in Leicester but uh and then cutting him south to stay there I think he's been exceptional um I can't wait to see him in a Calcutta Cup particularly if it's if it's close towards the end and him coming on and, and throwing some shots about in that defense you know so it's good and, and we spoke about sort of front row it's it's uh that's a that's a you know not a bad scrummaging unit to come on if they're if they're ahead um to hold on to something potentially um and yeah they've got some firepower in in, in uh, favour so you can as we we spoke about in previous pods is 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 gas Spencer to me as well is an absolute game game winner um he's so so good um and um you know I, I would have liked to have seen him in a white jersey ages ago but th- th- so be it and. Uh, not too sure about Smith. What 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 um, Borthwick will do? Will he bring him on? Uh, have they got a plan to bring him on with with a certain amount of time left, or will they keep George on to to keep hitting those drop goals? Time will tell. I wonder as well whether the Burbank selection is is a kind of a rope dope type thing as well, because I think Scotland would have perhaps really practice a lot of kicking strategy around Stewart being fullback. So potentially trying to turn him, trying to keep kicks low and on the ground rather than in, in the air. Yeah. And whether they're easily able to swap that out and go to a slightly different strategy because Furbank's now playing. I wonder if that's part of it as well. Just as a slight kind of pull the rug from under them kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it mass, I mean, when I saw it earlier, I, I was so surprised. Um, and on, and you can imagine in the UK it's it's on all the headlines sort of thing. But um, I'm presumably Freddie's not injured or anything, so it's purely sense. tactical. Which then it, it's 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 brilliant. Like it, it is, uh, you know, it will no no matter what happens on Saturday, it will 
Gregor must be thinking, oh, didn't see that coming. Um, so there'll, be, there'll, there'll definitely be some sort of sort of mind games going on. It, it's uh, it's it's really clever. Um, I c- cannot wait to see what's gonna what's gonna happen. But I mean, again, the other rope of dope back is is what we said earlier is that it, it is, as Borthwick anticipated that Scotland were never going to kick anyway. You know, so why, yeah. why, why, you know, why bother having Freddie there? It's going to be, yeah, class, and I'm sure the crowd are going to be play a, ma- a major part in this one. Yeah, what I want to see on Saturday is both teams going for it, like really going out to win the game, not to stay in it until the final few minutes, and hopefully eke out a win. I want to see both teams going for it. I'm concerned that may not be the case. I think England certainly will be territory first, and Scotland will as well, to be fair. Um, but. Hopefully we get some breaks in the game early so that, that teams loosen up and get into it because I think there's potential for an absolute classic on Saturday. Yeah, there is. I and mean, you just hope that exactly that, that both teams should be playing to just go for it. But psychologically, England are still in the chance to to get a grand slam, right? They're unbeaten. So you, you, they may get into a point where they don't want to lose. I, I don't think so. I don't think they're there mentally anyway. But, um, but then, and then Scotland are like, oh, well, we, we you know, we lost, um, uh, but they can still do a triple crown, right? So it's, um, you, you, ju- you want all that out the window and you want a Scottish crowd rewarded. They were brilliant the other week um, and, and deserved the, the win um, against France. So, yeah, I just... <sighs> I love Calcutta Cup. I think it's, it, but it's it's weird that that Scotland are favourites. Like it never happens that way. Even though it's away, it very rarely happens. But they, but they are. Can they, can they carry that and not let that weigh them down and play with the? I mean, the way they're going to win the game, I think, will be to play Finn's way and play fairly fast and loose, powerfully. Don't get me wrong, powerfully and earn the right. But then, but then switch it and go. Um, and and can they do that? Um. And not get rope doped by the selection that Borthwick said. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think England are going to be very much territory first to kick off. I think they're going to be going to try and strangle and and slow Scotland down and and sort of stop them playing their game. I think that's going to be the opening tactics. But then, if you look at the bet, the people that are coming on, they could get really sort of fast and loose towards the end. Do you think, Elko? What's your prediction? Who's going to win and by how much? Oh, T T T T T T. Um, oh God, it's really hard, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. I, I think it's going to be like an old school classic. Um, fifty five. No. Um, <laughs> Scotland plus four. Scotland plus four. Okay. I mean, my head. As we've discussed, it's incredibly tight. I pretty much agree. I think Scotland are probably just about favourites. But in such a tight game, I can't go against England. So I'm going <laughs> to... Scot- uh, Scotland 17, England 19. That's my call. Wow. It's very tight. Wow. So England will have to score a try in that case. Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Maybe more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. people at home. That's what that's what we think. But what do you think? Have we have we nailed all this? Are there key matchups or key players that you think are going to make a difference? What about the tactics? Do you think we've sort of described how the teams are going to try and play? Let us know in the comments down below, and we'll join you there for a good old conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it, which is good for everybody. Thank you, Elko, so much for your time today. Thanks, CT. Enjoy these games. Can't wait. Yeah, same too. And uh, people at home, you can subscribe there. Watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.